Good morning, Center Point Church family. Happy Sunday. I'm so glad that you are here today. Let's get ready to worship together this morning. Let's worship this morning. Heavenly Father. Sing it again. You are perfect. 
perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. In all of your ways to Amen. Let's thank our Father this morning. God, you are so good. Father, we worship you this morning, God. There is no one like you. You are so good to us. You are perfect in all of your ways, God. We worship you, we praise you, we honor you this morning. Thank you for peace. Let's just worship him this morning. So good, Jesus. And I don't want to be afraid every time I face the way. I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to fear the storm just because I hear it. I don't want to fear the storm. I don't want to fear the storm. Peace, be still. Say the word, and I will set my feet upon the sea till I'm dancing in the Let faith rise up, 
your prayer this morning. Let faith rise up, O oh heart, believe. Let faith rise up in me. Let faith rise up, O oh heart, believe. Let faith rise up in me. One more time. Faith rise up, O oh heart, believe. Let faith rise up in me. Amen. Place our trust in you this morning, Jesus. recognize our surroundings and our situation and ourselves, God. Your word promises that you will never leave us and you'll never forsake us, God, and that you never change. So this morning, we make a decision together, God, to place our trust in you, that our faith is in you and our hope is in you this morning. Because you are faithful and you never change. Amen, we worship you. serve a way maker it's who he is we worship you God we thank you
Sing it again. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. Oh, sing it one more time. Even when I don't see, we trust. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You're a way maker, way maker, miracle worker. Promise keep. My God, that is who you are. Sing way maker, way maker, miracle worker. Promise 
promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, amen. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, amen. That is who you are. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Church, do you believe that today? Do you believe that he is a way maker? You know, there are people who are watching today, no doubt, that need the Lord to make a way in their life. They've got a door that's standing in front of them and it's closed. Or they've got a mountain sitting in front of them and they need a way through or a way over or a way around or a way under. They need God to make a way. Today you may be that person that I'm talking to. You may be facing a situation in your life that seems impossible. Church, I can tell you I have faced a lot of impossible situations in my life. When I was a child, I laid in a hospital in Tulsa. They told my mom that there was no way I would ever make it past high school. Yet here I am. I've had people time and time again tell me that things were impossible. I've even looked at situations and assessed them myself and said, there's no way. But we serve a God who can make a way where there seems to be no way. So if that's you today, I want to pray for you. In just a few moments in our service, we'll give you the opportunity to fill out a connection card. And at that time, you can actually share a specific request with us. But right now, I want to take the opportunity to pray for the needs in your life. So today, if you have a need, I know this may feel weird. You may be sitting there in your dining room, sitting at the table and, and watching this live stream. But if you've got a need today just to to signify that to the Lord, I want you to lift up your hand. And I want to pray for you. Lord, I love you so much. You know I do. I'm so thankful for your love. I'm so thankful for everything that you have done for me and for my family and for this church. God, right now I pray for each and every request that is represented by anyone that's watching this live stream. Every hand that just went up, God, you know the need. Lord, I pray that right now that you will restore relationships in the name of Jesus. Lord, pick up the pieces and put them back together. Lord, I pray that you will heal in the name of Jesus. Lord, reach down and touch that baby girl right now. Heal her. Lord, I pray for finances right now. You have children who are struggling, God. I pray that you will help. And Lord, every request that I didn't touch on, you know what they are. God, I pray that you will move in a mighty and a miraculous way in the name of Jesus. Lord, I know that in just a few moments we're going to be talking about a story from the Bible where, where you did something that everybody thought was impossible. So I know you can do it. And Lord, I pray that you will. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wow. Church, I believe it. I believe he's going to do it. Share those needs with me in the, in the connection card in just a few moments. And, and then when he moves in a miraculous way, 
Share that praise report with me. I want to be a part of that. I can't wait. Amen. Well, good morning. Welcome to Centerpoint Church Online. This is hopefully the last Sunday that we have to do only online. My hope and prayer is that next week we're going to be able to open the doors and we're going to have people here sitting in the seats and we'll still be doing online. For those of you who can't make it due to the different circumstances in your life, you're still a part of our church. We still love you. But I hope that some of us can get together next week. So this may be the last time that I say that I want to give you the opportunity to give even though we don't have any ushers today. I want to give you the opportunity to be opportunity, excuse me, to be obedient to the Lord in this area of your life. God's word tells us that 10% of everything that we're given goes right back to him as a tithe, a first fruits offering. It's the one area of scripture where the Lord says, test me and see if I won't be faithful. So today I want to challenge you to do that, church. Put God to the test. See if he won't be faithful. And if you have something above and beyond your tithe that you want to give, I want to challenge you to give to missions. There's no better place that you can give than making sure that more people hear the name of Jesus. I honestly believe that. We're going to pray over this offering, and in just a moment we will have some announcements before we come back and share the word with you today. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity you give us to sow into the work of your kingdom. Lord, I pray today for this offering that you will bless it, that you will multiply it, and that you will bless each and every one who gives. In Jesus' name, amen. To Center Point Church. Welcome to Center Point Welcome Church. To Welcome to Center Point Church. Good morning. Good morning. We're the Bonds. Welcome to Center Point Church. Welcome to Center Point Church. We are so glad that you've chosen to worship with us on this very special Mother's Day. We want to connect with you. Please take a minute to complete our online connection card. Let us know how we can pray for you. Happy Mother's Day to all of our moms. You are a blessing to us. Thank you for all that you do. Giving is easy at Centerpoint Church. You can give by texting 479-777-2027, online at centerpointnwa.com, or by mail. Your giving makes a great impact. Here are a few of our coming events. Centerpoint family, we miss you. Join us for dinner in the park beginning this Wednesday night at 6.30 p.m. Bring your dinner in a blanket or chair and join us as we socialize from a distance. We'll meet at the Senior Center side of Wardnell Park in Lowell. We are so excited to announce Phase 1 of the return of Centerpoint Church on Sunday, May 17th at 10.10 a.m. Please be sure to visit our Facebook page or our website to learn more about the guidelines for these unique services. Thanks again for being here. As always, like us on Facebook or visit us at centerpointnwa.com for more information about these and other events.
Well, welcome back. Before we go any further in this service, I want to start off by saying Happy Mother's Day to all of our moms. I am so glad that you have joined with us today for our online celebration. And, uh, you know, I wish we could all be together, but with the governor's guidelines that he has put into place and with the additional crowds that we normally have on Mother's Day, I just didn't feel like that we could adequately meet the needs of the people and the governor. So for one more week, we're going to celebrate online, and I just want to say welcome and happy Mother's Day. We're so glad that you're here. Uh, Thank you. Thank you for joining us. What I want to do is I want to ask everyone in the room, if you would, to fill out a connection card for me. Normally, if we were in service, I'd be holding one up and telling you all about it, but We have got an online digital connection card. We're putting the link in the comments right now. You can fill that out now, or you can go back later and look at the comments and fill that out. But I'm going to ask everyone who's with us today to fill one of those cards out because we want to know that you are here. We want to be able to celebrate the fact that you are here. And if you are a mom, then I want you to put right there in the comments, I'm a mom, and we want to get a gift into your hands. So if you would, please go ahead and fill that card out for me right now. And as everyone does that, I do want to make, for probably the third or fourth time now, a big announcement, and that is that next Sunday on May 17th, we are going to once again open the doors of Centerpoint Church. We are excited about this. There are going to be a lot of strict guidelines, and you can find all of those on our Facebook page. I don't want you to show up next week and not know what's going on because we're going to keep the doors locked until just a few minutes before service. We're going to sit everybody in family groups six feet apart from one another, and we won't have any children's or youth programs. And there will be other guidelines as well that we're going to follow. So please go to our Facebook and find that information. But I am excited about getting together next Sunday for church, and hopefully you are too. If you are, right now you can type in the comment box, amen, or I'm ready, or can't wait, or whatever you want to say, I'm fine with it, as long as it's clean and honest. And I want to tell you about one more thing, and that is that this Wednesday night at 6.30 p.m., we are going to meet for what we're calling dinner in the park, and I'm excited about that. You know, we know that some people are not going to be able to come together for our worship services, and that doesn't mean that they're any less a part of our church or any less a part of our family, and I want to be able to get everyone together. So what we're going to do is we're going to come together outdoors. We're going to sit six feet apart in family groups on blankets or in lawn chairs or or whatever. Everybody bring your dinner with you, and we're just going to visit, and we're just going to have a time of fellowship. That's all that is. Uh, no pressure. If you can't make it, that's no big deal. And and uh, if you're late, that's fine. If you have to leave early, that's fine. Uh, we just want to be able to, to, to see everyone. And it's going to be really, really casual. There's no program. Nobody's going to make you play any games or do anything you don't want to do. We're just going to hang out for a little while. And, uh, and here's the thing, too. If it rains, we're not going to do it. So, uh, don't worry about having to, having to wonder if you're going to get wet. If it's raining, then we're going to stay home. So I'm excited about that, and I hope you are too. Join us Wednesday night, and uh, again, you can find the information, more information rather, about that on our Facebook. Please turn in your Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 16 and place a marker in Hebrews chapter 11. Today I'm going to be reading from the New International Version as we talk about how to be a mom. It's a good day to talk about how to be a mom, isn't it? I think it is. Now listen up, men. I don't want you to check out because the truth of the matter is sometimes dad needs to step up and be a mom so that mom can have a break. So that mom can stop being mom for a few minutes and can just be a woman. Sometimes dad needs to step up and wipe the noses and kiss the boo-boos and give the snuggles and do all the other things that moms just naturally know how to do. 
You say, well, pastor, I'm just not wired that way. You know what I say to that? Fooey. Just off fooey. Get over yourself. And by the way, I'm the only one today who's here right now who knows what we're going to talk about today. So all of you dads who just aren't wired that way and anyone else who's not a mom, you're just going to have to trust me and take my word for it that there is some good stuff in today's message for everyone, whether you're a mom or not. I thought I would start us off with an activity that you can do at home when church is over to celebrate our moms. I was scrolling through Facebook earlier this week, and I came across a test to tell whether you're capable or not of being a mom. We're not going to read all of the tests, but I picked a few of my favorites. The first thing on it was the mess test. It said to have someone spear peanut butter on the sofa and the curtains and hide a fish stick somewhere in the house for a few weeks and then see if you can find it and clean it up without losing your cool. Next is the toy test. Obtain a 55-gallon drum of Legos. It says if Legos aren't available, you can substitute roofing tax. Have someone spread them all over your house, and then you put on a blindfold and walk to the bathroom or the kitchen. You lose points on this one if you scream because that might wake a child up in the middle of the night. There's the grocery store test. I like this one. Borrow one or two small animals that says that goats are best and take them with you to shop at the grocery store. Keep them inside at all times and pay for anything that they eat or damage. There's the dressing test. Obtain a large live octopus and stuff it into a small fishnet bag, making sure that all arms stay inside the bag. And then finally, the nighttime test. You prepare this test by obtaining a small cloth bag and fill it with 8 to 12 pounds of sand. Soak it thoroughly in water, and then at 8 p.m., you begin to waltz and hum with the bag until 9 p.m. At 9 o'clock, you lay down your bag, and you set your alarm for 10 o'clock. At 10, you get up, you pick up your bag, and you sing every single song that you have ever heard and then you make up about a dozen more songs off the top of your head and sing those until around 4 a.m. Set your alarm for five, get up, make breakfast, do this for five more years, and look cheerful while you're doing it. If you can do all of those things, then maybe you're ready to be a mom. Moms, does that sound about right? You can share your stories and your comments in the chat boxes there if you want to. Man, being a mom is hard. It takes hard work, dedication, patience, love, perseverance, and that's all just for the first week. And then you have to do it for about 25 or 35 or 45 or 75 more years. Well, today I want us to look at a woman in the Bible, and I want us to learn from her how to be a mom. The woman we're talking about is a woman named Sarai. Sarai was the wife of a man named Abram, and one day the Lord came to Abram in a vision, and in his conversation with God, Abram expressed that he was frustrated because he didn't have any kids. He was 75 years old, and he didn't have any children, and he said, everything that I've accumulated over all these years, I'm going to have to hand down to this guy who's just one of my servants. The Lord says to Abram, he takes him outside. In Genesis 15, 5, he takes him outside, and he says, Abram, look up at the stars and count them if you can. He says, your offspring shall be as these stars. In other words, you're going to have as many descendants as there are stars in the sky. And then in verse 6, it says something cool. It says, Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. 
Can you imagine being 75 years old with no children at all and God saying, I'm going to give you so many children that your descendants are going to be like the stars of the sky and believing him. That's probably the most impressive part of this whole story to me is in verse 6 when it says, Abram believed the Lord. But this is Mother's Day, not Father's Day. So let's talk about Sarai. The part of Sarai's life that we're going to look at in determining how to be a mom is found beginning in Genesis 16, verses 1 through 4. Let's read that together. It says, Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, but she had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So she said to Abram, The Lord has kept me from having children. Go, sleep with my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Abram agreed to what Sarah said. So after Abram had been living in Canaan 10 years, Sarai, his wife, took her Egyptian slave, Hagar, and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar, and she conceived. It says when she knew she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. The first thing that we need to learn about Sarai is that she was a woman of action. Sarai was a woman of action. Here she was well into her 70s with no children to show for it. Years earlier, the Lord had told her husband that he was going to give them children. As many descendants as there were stars in the sky, and neither of the two of them were getting any younger, you know that Abram had to be wearing Sarai out saying, come on, come on, when are you going to give me some kids? So what does this woman of action do? She finds a way. I think we can all agree that she didn't use the greatest measure of wisdom in her decision. She didn't do the wisest thing in the world. But the fact of the matter is that she wasn't going to just sit around and let life pass her by. She was going to take action. That's what a good mom does. Guys, I'll be honest with you. Sometimes Christina wears me out. Because she's a woman of action. She sees something that needs to be done, and she takes action. And when she takes action, action, excuse me, sometimes that means that I have to take action. Now, it doesn't always mean that. Sometimes she does it all on her own. There was one time just a few weeks back, we went to sleep with, with the house in a little bit of disorder. It was a Sunday night. We were tired. We had had a long, long day. We went to bed, and the house was a little bit of mess. And I got up the next morning at 7 a.m. And I didn't sleep in. I mean, we're talking 7 a.m., right? That's not late. Christina wasn't in bed with me anymore when I opened my eyes. So I got up and went to look for her, and I got to the living room. It was spotless. I got to the kitchen. It was spotless. I got to the bathroom. Don't play. I mean, it was still messy. She had got up. At I don't know what hour, I looked at her and I said, what time did you get up? She said, well, I wanted to start the week off with the house clean. She was a woman of action. Moms are women of action. If something needs to be done, they find a way. If their baby needs a new pair of shoes, they're going to sell stuff on Facebook Marketplace or they're going to have a garage sale or they're going to pick up extra shifts at work. They're going to find some way to make sure that baby gets a new pair of shoes. If their baby is sick, you better believe that the doctor will see that child. I don't care if it's their lunch hour or if they're planning on going golfing that afternoon or whatever. And let me give you some advice, folks. If you're ever going to pick on a kid or an adult for that matter, you better make sure that mama doesn't find out because you'll learn real quick that moms are women of action. So Hagar had her baby boy. She named him Ishmael. And he was Abram's son. Now, he wasn't Sarai's son. In, in no way, shape, or form was he Sarai's son, but he was definitely Abram's son. Abram loved him. Thirteen years later, God visited Abraham again. This is 
told in Genesis chapter 17. When the Lord visited Abram this time, he told him, I will make you a father of many nations. In fact, he changed his name from Abram to Abraham, which means father of many. You guys remember Abraham, right? Father Abraham had many sons. You know, we have a song. We sing all about how he had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, Father Abraham had many sons. Left arm, and many sons had Father Abraham. I want us to pick up the story again in Genesis chapter 17, starting in verse 15. It says, God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarai. Her name will be Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be a mother of nations. Kings of peoples will come from her. Abraham fell face down. He laughed and he said to himself, Will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Will Sarah bear a child at the age of 90? And Abraham said to God, If only Ishmael might live under your blessing. He said, Lord, let Ishmael be the one that carries on the blessing. And God said, Yes, but your wife Sarah will bear you a son, and you will call him Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant covenant for his descendants after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard you. I will surely bless him. I will make him fruitful and will greatly increase his numbers. He will be the father of 12 rulers, and I will make him into a great nation. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you by this time next year. When he had finished speaking with Abraham, God went up from him. So here we are 14 years after the big error, 14 years after the mistake that Sarai and Abraham, or Abram at the time, and Hagar made. And God comes back, he renames him Abraham, and he says, hey, by the way, that mistake, that wasn't it. That wasn't my plan, that's not what I was talking about. He says, your wife is no longer called Sarai, she will now be called Sarah, which means princess. And next year she's going to have a son, you're going to name him Isaac, And he will be the son through whom my promise will be fulfilled. Now, in chapter 18, the Bible says that three men came to see Abraham. We don't really know who these three men were. Many scholars believe that one of the men was God the Father and the other two were angels, all in human form. Some believe that it was the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all in human form. Others believe that it was just three prophets. We don't really know. What we do know is it was God's way of confirming to Abram that what he saw in the vision was correct. I want us to read the conversation that these men and Abraham had from Genesis chapter 18, verse 9 through verse 15. Where is your wife Sarah, they asked him. There in the tent, he said. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already very old, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, After I am worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh? And say, will I really have a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Verse 15 says, Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, yes, you did laugh. The second thing I want us to notice about Sarah is that she was real. She was a real woman. These men come and prophesy about her her having a son. And what does she say? She says, ha! (laughs) Are you kidding me? 
You've got to be kidding at this age. And then when they heard her, she even lied about it. They said, why did you laugh? And she said, oh, I didn't laugh. Mamas, listen to me. We're talking about Sarah. We're talking about Isaac's mama, Jacob's grandma. We're talking about the woman whose name, which means princess, was given to her by God himself, and she was real. She was raw. She wasn't the perfect, prim, and proper, always saying and doing the right thing woman. She was the laugh out loud and lie about it woman. She was real. I'm hoping that this fact makes you feel good because if I were to wager, I would say that most of you are not the prim and proper and perfect, always saying the right thing mama. Sometimes you are the laugh out loud, go out in public with your hair messed up, mess up with your kids, mama. And that's all right. It's all right to be real. It's all right to be raw. This could be a continuation of last week's point number one. Does anybody remember what that was? I'll say it before you get a chance to type it in the chat box, but it's you're going to mess up. No two bones about it. You're going to mess up. In raising your kids, you're going to mess up. In loving your husband, you're going to mess up. At your job, you're going to mess up. I guess this isn't the most motivating word in the world, but it's the truth. The truth is you're going to mess up. That's all there is to it. I got to tell you something, church. Tomorrow morning, my baby girl is going to start her new job at an insurance company in Little Rock. Next Saturday, we're going to move my baby girl into her new apartment in Little Rock so that she can start her new life. Last Saturday, a week ago, she should have graduated cum laude from the University of Central Arkansas with a degree in communication and psychology, and she's a youth pastor at a church plant in North Little Rock. In other words, I'm really proud of my baby girl. She's done a really good job. She's really making it. But let me tell you something. When that little girl was not even a month old, my wife picked her up in her little baby carrier without it being latched in, and that thing flipped over upside down, and Courtney went face first into the bathroom floor. Man, Christina thought she had done the worst thing in the world. She cried and cried about that. And I'm sure that the enemy piled on guilt upon guilt in Christina's mind about the thing that she had done. Just like he has done for dozens and dozens of other mistakes that she's made over the years. But here's the thing. Courtney did all right in spite of being thrown on her face. Courtney did all right in spite of all the parenting mistakes that we made as she grew up. Uh, Justin? Yeah. I'm kidding. Man, Justin's the greatest kid in the world. He's one of my best friends in the world. I love that kid. We're not the best parents, but in spite of all of our mistakes, they did all right. I get that television makes us think that all dads are goobers and all moms have it together. I get that. It gets a laugh out of people. But let me tell you something. That's not the case. It's okay to be real, moms. It's okay to be raw. It's okay to mess up, and it's okay to not always know the right answer. Sarah was a woman of action, even when her actions were not the best. Sarah was a real woman. And finally, Sarah was a woman of faith. Say, what? Preacher, I think you read the wrong point there. You might want to look at that again. You just told us that she laughed in the Lord's face when he said she was going to have a baby. That's right, I did just get through telling you that. 
I just got through telling you that Sarah was a real woman who laughed at the mere thought of the promise. So how in the world could I tell you that she was a woman of faith? I want you to look at Genesis chapter 21, verses 1 through 7 is where this is. We're not going to read the whole thing. In that passage, we're told that God did exactly what he said he was going to do. A year later, well, at that time, Sarah became pregnant. A year later, she had a son when she was 90 years old. And when he was born, this is what Sarah said. God has brought me laughter, and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. Sarah said, <laughs> can you believe it? Oh, my goodness gracious. See, when Sarah first laughed, when she was standing in the tent and she laughed, it was out of disbelief. But here she laughed out of amazement. Here she laughed out of joy. And somewhere in between those two laughs, we don't know where it was. It may have been when she saw that the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. It may have been a bunch of stuff we don't know. But some point, at some point between those two laughs, Sarah became a woman of faith. We know that because of what it says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11. It says, and by faith, even Sarah. Look at someone you're sitting with and say, even Sarah. Even Sarah, who was a woman of action and didn't always make the best decisions. Even Sarah, who laughed in the Lord's face. Even Sarah, who was real and raw and made mistakes. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. It says God enabled her to have children at an old age because she believed. You see, church, a good mom has faith. Not in herself, but in the one who makes the promises. It's not about the actions that she takes. It's not about the mistakes that she makes. It's about faith. It's about her faith in the one who's making the promises. I'm going to ask everyone who's watching with us today to bow your head and close your eyes. I want to talk to our mamas for a minute. We'll talk to all of our mamas. I want to talk to our mamas who are in their early 20s, mamas who are knocking on the door of 30, We're talking about our mamas, or talk to our mamas, rather, who were in that 30 to 45 that just kind of all runs together bucket. And I want to talk to our mamas whose babies are mamas. See, I know how the enemy works. He uses guilt and he uses shame to 
get you down, to always convince you that what you are doing is not enough for your kids, that what you're doing isn't what they need. You run around being women of action and you're you're trying your best. You're, you're, you're trying everything you can. Some of it's working, some of it's not. I get that. Today I want to tell you that it's all right, that you're doing a good job. Today I want to encourage you to not put your trust in what you're doing with your kids. Put your trust in the one who makes promises. Put your trust in the Lord. If that's you that I'm talking to today and and the devil's got you down, I want you to do me a favor. I know this is a happy day. I know this is a day where we celebrate together. But if that's you, I don't want you to go through this day any further with those thoughts in your mind. I want you right now to lift up your hand and say, I need you to pray for me. Uh, tell your, Hopefully your kids are there with you. Look at your kids and be honest with them and say, listen, guys, mama needs you to pray for me. And let's just do that. Gather around with your family right where you're at. Gather around and let's pray for our moms. Can we do that, church? Let's do that. Lord, I love you so much. I'm so thankful for my mother. Lord, I know everything. Well, that's a lie, Lord. I I don't know and, and could never know everything that she gave up to try to make a life for me. Lord, I pray that today that you will let her feel that love and appreciation. I can't be in the room with her, but... Lord, let her know that she's loved. Let her know that it's not about the actions that she took or the mistakes that she made or even the things that she accomplished, God, that it's all about you. And that her prayers are what brought us to where we are today. Lord, I'm thankful for my wife. I love her so much. She means the world to me. God, I know how the devil fights her, how he battles her in her mind. Lord, I pray that today you will encourage her. Remind her what an amazing job that she's doing. And take the weight and the responsibility that she feels off of her. Let her put it on you, God. Lord, I pray for every mom that's associated with our church, whether she comes here or her kids do. Lord, I pray for our moms today that you'll give them strength and encouragement. That you will combat what the enemy is trying to do. Thank you, Jesus. I worship you, God. Thank you, Father. I love you so much. Hallelujah. Before we go any further, I want to ask one more question. With every head bowed and every eye closed, It's a possibility that your mom somehow conned you in to watching church with her today, even though you don't love the Lord. Or there's a possibility, I guess, moms, that your kids somehow conned you into watching church with them as a way of spending Mother's Day together. I'm here to tell you today that The Bible tells us that every single one of us has sinned. That means we've messed up. And that because we've messed up, we are unacceptable to God, to the guy that created this whole world that we're living in.
But because we have sinned and because we're unacceptable and because God wants a relationship with us, the Bible tells us that he sent his son to pay the price for our sins. Jesus came and lived on this earth and never sinned one time. And he chose to lay down his life to pay the price for you and for me. The most important decision that you could ever make is to give your life to Christ. So today, if you're here and you don't know him, but you say, you know what, I want to. I want to know this God that you're talking about. Then right where you're at, I want you to lift up your hand. And I want you to repeat after me. And in fact, if if you're there with someone who raised their hand, I want everybody in the room to say this prayer. I don't want anybody praying by themselves. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I love you. Thank you for the price that you paid. I know that I've messed up. Please forgive me of my sin and make me part of the family of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you just prayed that prayer and you meant it, the Bible says that all of heaven just shut down and threw a party because of you. I want you to know that I'm proud of you. You should do me a favor, and I want you to fill out that connection card, and in the comments there, I want you to write, I got saved, or I gave my life to Christ, or I said that prayer. I want to have the opportunity to connect with you, to get some materials into your hands, and to help you walk down this road with this new life. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm so glad you're here with us. Happy Mother's Day. We'll see you next week. God bless you. You're dismissed.